Hey, 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 my name is Paul Stinks and welcome to the latter. Alright, elevator, let's do it. It's quite right up to the same floor where the PRC Luxburn main office is. Seb has been kind enough to switch the key guest elevator's power on just as I'm about to head for the fire exit stairs. Which is a welcome relief. I'm an active guy. But stairs? I don't want to tire out too quickly in case things get ugly. There probably won't be any trouble with the building this quiet, but you never know. I swear the whole place definitely feels eerie at this time of night. But I didn't have confirmed anything, those are just still just stories. Worse things can happen. No need to scare myself. Mistake gold means fewer mistakes. True. Though I sure am fucking gutsy, especially with what I'm doing. I'm breaking a lot of laws here. I'm also putting Isabella in a lot of risks. Best thing that can come out of this is that Isabel's right all along. Worst case scenario. 1. Someone finds out Isabel's involvement in this and her boss fires her. 2. I find evidence that would implicate BRC or look right in a crime. And my meddling, if I'm not careful enough, makes it inadmissible in court. 4. I'll be honest, I strongly prefer losing my job or facing right over some, well, spirit or ghost or whatever it is. I could always work around the problems with the former. Isabel could also find a better job. PRC never did pay her properly despite her efforts. By fighting off a phantom? H how does one even do that? D do guns even work with them? Yeah, not going to happen. But tonight I'm here to fix things. If I do it without leaving a trail, all the better. I think that's what I'm good at. Easy way in achievement unlocked. Right, it's been a while since I've unlocked any achievements in this game. And what I'll probably never be good at is finding the proper words when a siege calls for it. But seeing Isabel's small form beyond those doors, how she pushes through this pipe, carrying an entire different burden this time, how she's pretending gas if everything is normal, it's. it's difficult not to try. People who have never looked beyond her smiles will never know, will never understand. Hell, even Rebecca's probably not yet aware of this. I get it, we have other problems at hand. I've done the same thing plenty of times to prove myself after all. But it's all in her eyes. When she glances up at the few light straps, I give the door. She wastes no time in leaving the mess of papers and people and opening it for me. For even her confusion as she takes in my present barely hides it. Seb, let you in? The rough edge in her voice rings a whole different tune now that I'm aware of I. But knowing it's different from hearing it straight from her. I can't simply bring this up, can I? It's not a topic user suited for casual conversation. And, well, I doubt she wants to talk to me about it. As much as I want to help, there's a distance between us I will never be able to cross. One that wouldn't even be there if it wasn't for me. Perhaps if I had been more honest years ago and less of a coward, I might have been able to. Figures I couldn't even do that for the one person I keep telling myself that I care deeply about. What can I say? I'm a very charming person. To a rock, maybe? Ouch. <laughs> this is the closest we can get to. So I suppose the light banter, the fleeting glance, or sometimes the long bouts of silence. And it's enough. For me, this goes even about words. There's comfort. With her, it's easy. Must be a pretty cool rock, then. Ugh, get over yourself. Hey now, I deserve some slack here. Today's supposed to be my day off, and yet here I am helping you out. Helping? By standing at the door? Well, you're not exactly letting me in. Despite what she says, she moves to block me when I try to enter. She must have expected this the second we walked up to the, bu uh, the building at stars and counted on the night chief guard to bar me from the place. It's treasuring to know she's somehow worried about me, although it's a bit misplaced at the moment. Besides her concerns aside, I can't let her get into the thick of things without me. Not with all the problems on her plate right now. Isabella? Seriously, Ash, Seb might get in trouble for this. You might get in even bigger trouble with your boss. And you're not? We've already talked about this back at Zach's. It's out of the question. At least do it for Seb, please. He's a really nice guy. With the way things are going here, he's... Oh, that I agree with her. Seb's not such a bad fellow. Might be a little bit careless with his job and talks too much about him as well. 
I'd hate to see the guy leave here with a bad record in case something goes wrong. Over the anxious look, she shoots back the table behind her bring an even bigger worry. Did you find something? Aside from what you told me about yesterday? N not yet. I'm not sure. I haven't started going through the files we have in the records room. Just the ones they handed to me and Rose. Let me see. Wait, Ash! Isabella, I already promised you that no one's going to get in trouble after we're done here. Even Seth. I'll make sure we leave the place clean. Her hesitation still there a split second of indecision as she tries to form an argument. Eventually, when nothing comes to mind, she steps aside. Okay, but we can't take the original files out of this office, clear? Not even a single sheet. We'll just have to make a copy. Don't worry, that's the plan. It appears to reassure her, and not then shortly gestures for me to follow. Passing the sea of cubicles, I can't help but taking everything in Ruffy's, a force of habit for the most part. As far as I know, we are still Luxborn used to own this whole building. Offices in several floors. Once upon a time, when real estate is still a cool creative business for the company in this side of the country. Then competition showed up and suddenly everything's not so good anymore. It only got worse as the years went by, or so according to the rumors. Now the branch is just this floor. Despite what the huge sign the building's facade says, and frankly, it's not too hard to believe when one looks at the state of this room right now. A number of desks have been cleared out. Personal mementos are scarce as if the employees have gone on an exodus. That will be the downsizing, probably, still worrisome for. Of course, I shake away all of this when Isabella starts handing me the papers she's been looking through. Focus, Frey. There is no point in whining or dwelling any longer on it. That's why we're here, in the first place, to find out what the real deal is the old-fashioned way. Isabella's presence is a whole other blessing too. I couldn't imagine how long this would take if I pushed going in here alone. Is this everything? Where are the documents you mentioned? Still locked up in the records room. Do you need them now? Bring them here. Everything that has to do with the mansion's sale. Even those who worked on it during the renovations. The cleanup. Everything. Including your mandatory sign-in sheets. <laughs> it's an odd thing to bring up. At least it elicits a laugh from her before she heads for the records room. She remembers. And no matter how weak the sound of it is from her usual ones, it's a welcome thing to hear. It reminds me that Isabel I know is still in there. She turns minutes later with a thick stack of folders and benders. For the next half of the hour, we work in the silence while we dig into everything compiled in the folders. Not an easy task considering how thick the whole thing is, but there is two of us. If Isabel does most of the work, sorting the contracts, the employee list, and stuff we won't eat into a neat pile. Just a fight for the restoration alone makes up a stack of papers that's an inch, that's an inch thick. Third party service providers hired by for the masonry, radiators, woodworking, plaster work, slate roofing, and a whole bunch of other things are well documented. Hell, every single contractor who worked on the project were listed individually, even if they were just there to do the plumbing. It's a high profile and high cost estate, alright. But with dead scope comes the loopholes, means plenty of room to hide something in. If there's something fishy going on, all I have to do is find a pattern. And it doesn't take long. Upon closer glance, despite the original owners shouldering the renovation costs, it will be surprising if they've managed to break even on the Airman Garden mansion. What with the additional expenses for the open house? Commission for the agents and other overhead fees. At one point, the negotiations to get it listed under BRC's name almost broke down too. Some disagreement about the listing price. The owners wanted to be rid of it as quickly as possible, while keeping the wharf at a profitable level. BRC was insisting on a higher amount, double what the appraiser suggested. This plus did more that their branch is closing. We are still large born release in their red, and the scale of the mansion could have easily been the desperate move to keep the branch afloat. No wonder the final sale happened as fast as it did. Did you know about this? No. They took it off our hands after I submitted the final documents for the sale. I didn't even know until I read this. I'm not sure if Rose did. I've only been given the key to the records room after she... 
A anyway, my point is, they've kept all the files from me. Rose was the one who compiled everything from our side. And even then, she was probably not aware of this. There's only so much they let us know. After that, they just told us to wait for our commission, and that the legal team would handle the rest. The rumors are true, huh? Seems so. Shit. This place is just unlucky. Going bankrupt while the rest of this crap is happening. But this isn't what we were looking for. What we need is the who. The people aside from Isabel and Koopa involved in this business with the mansion and the how they are now. We can't do much with the outside contractors, they won't be on file. The employee list, on the other hand. Even with two people working to the pile, the whole task still takes quite a while. It's a quarter of an hour later when we put down the papers with a sigh and move on to the clients upon Isabella's insistence. For that, the sign-in form from the open house comes in handy. <laughs> Something that gives me laugh when I spy the fake name I wrote on one of the sheets. On the right, look right, Richard Frank, Ozaya Ventuk, Ashley, okay, Charles Lakenas, Mercy Ty, Lauren Stiles, Madeleine Williams, Beatrice Wild, Beatrice Wild. Yeah, I bet it's Ashley. Why'd I even pick this name? It sounds so lame. What name? Nothing important. Just focus on those papers you have. We need to finish this soon, before Seb suspects anything. She's not just a paper way before the photo of, it hi of hiding it occurs to me. Not that there's much secret in it, it's about found me that afternoon anyway, but still. Ash Lee? I've been cursed that day. They need to cry while confirming where they were headed off to. While the butlers terribly efficient keeping their rights and engagements from the public eye, there are other ways if only I've given it the time of my day. Also, that was a stupid way to write your name like that. Ashton Ash. And your freaking surname is Frey. But... Ash, alright, maybe... Somehow work out. Uh, whatever. In respect, I've been too eager, too impatient to find something that will crack the case and be done with it. Maybe my feather goes as far back as the day of the open house, not during the party last night. Yeah, well, I was pressed for time. Seriously, Ashley? Were you even trying? Oh, come on. You didn't even notice I was the one who wrote it down. Of course I wouldn't. Only an idiot would use his real name. Exactly. Or a genius. It worked though. Admit it. It's genius. Who would have thought, huh? She responds for all cries, then drops the matter entirely by showing the paper back to my hands. We lapse back to our respective tasks afterwards. Or does this mean through everything? Read. Set aside. Get another one. Looking back at the sign-in sheet, I spot look right and hollow right listed up top. Now that I don't know about them already, of course. But scanning through the list, the name immediately comes to my attention. Madeline Williams. Something wrong? Huh? No, uh, just that I remember this girl listed here. What? She froze. Moves her seat closer and takes careful read the sheet. There's a long moment before she speaks up again, but from the way she dances, she appears to be expecting the worst already. What about her? She was with me. In the group following Cooper, when we toured the upstairs part of the mansion, I mean. Rather loud one, especially when we took a peek into the attic. Kept talking about the ghost stories the whole tour. Then... do you? Do you think she's... She was reported missing three days after. What? Okay. Right, I'm trying to somehow connect that person if she appeared, but I don't think so. There was a raucous and depressing the day her family filled in. Threats were naturally given the lack of progress days later, desperate ones. Her family is willing to shell out all the cash they have just to find her, to no avail, unfortunately. Officer Benjamin has been in a bad mood ever since he's spoken with them, but what can he do? What can we do? He's tied. We're all tied. 
There's only so much we're able to do with everything that has been shoved into our hands recently. She still hasn't been found. It's already been a week. Uh, Isabel makes no further comment aside from a nod. Instead, she sits back on her chair with a distant look in her eyes. Her hands... holding to a fist as she struggles with her frustration. Stick to the water this time. Or maybe it's anger. But the moment doesn't last long. Too long. Soon her grip loosens and she folds her hands back on her lap. Her expression, however. It's one I've seen too many times in the mirror. What does one say to a person burdened by, not by one boss, but many? Who carries it in her shoulders like a badge of shame? Hmm. I've yet to find the answer to that myself. Until then, the only way is forward. Press on to see where our attempts at fixing our mistakes might lead us. And despite my own doubts, a glimpse of that look on her face is enough reason for me. I can't just give up. There's too much at stake, too much to lose. With a renewed focus, I continue. On the third and last sheet, I spot another one. Beatrice Wild. One I recall from the newspaper, obituaries. Died of a heart attack. A letter of correspondence expressing condolences to her family confirms as much in her files. Passed away at age 74 in her sleep. Well, that was an old hack, so... No offense, but I would say it was kind of her time, I guess. She's at that age. It certainly could have been a natural death. Right? I'd like to believe so. But three more letters turn up when I run through the stack, and it leaves nothing more than foreboding feeling in me. They're all addressed to families of clients who have passed away in the past week. Regardless, it's going to be a pile of things worth looking into after our visit here along with Williams in for shit. There are just so many names, so many faces, each one I've seen that day, and here I'm wondering if they're all right. It isn't a selfless thought that brings the question to mind, rather easy logic that if more of them are still alive, the more people I can choose to question. Nothing is concrete yet, of course. These are just speculations, but we are making progress. Once done with the signing sheets, I stash it along with the growing pile to my left and pull out as many of the other documents Isabella has already prepared for me. We're working through the employee lists now, those who have been assigned to the mansion. Because if Isabel was to be believed, if what she's seen and what happened to Cooper is because of that letter, I need to know everyone who has possibly read it aside from the three of us. If they've been noticing strange things too, for all I know, this may have just been a terrible coincidence. Although the thought of that starts to diminish as we dig in the BRC's company files. Fifteen minutes later, the stack close to my elbow has risen from 5 to 21 different uh, dossiers. Client and employee documentation. People who have either visited the open house or worked on the property in some capacity since the letter's discovery. Turns out, there were two more employees who handled the mesh directly aside from Cooper and Isabella. Christian Sai, the reality specialist, and Mark Julius Jean Marie, the estate appraiser. This C guy, he was in custody just the other day. Really? Sir John has been looking for him. He stopped reporting to work a few weeks ago. Are you sure it's the same person? Yep, this is him. Folks at the precinct said they went to his house after a noise complaint. They found him just acting all crazy. Had to take him in when he started getting violent. He kept screaming about... a woman. Immediately, she stiffens. I don't want to bring it up or imply a connection, is what story, but that is exactly what happened. He was driving the guards mad, but he didn't last too long in there. A few hours in, and he just started... bashing his own head against the wall, and... well... You know the rest of this story? It was messy, to say the least. Oh, no. We had no idea. Is he... is he okay? HR just marked him as AWOL because none of their calls would get through. I mean, he already said it was a mess, so... He's in the hospital right now. I heard they're putting him into a psychiatric ward as soon as he recovers. He's still a bit... unstable. John Maria, on the other hand. 
His employee filed out his date of leaving and even when his final payment had been given. Along with it, there is a letter to his family about the appraiser being found dead in the office. Communication is hush hush and there is mention of conversation if they don't talk about it to the media. Inspector Abili has often scolded me for not reading the reports on a regular basis, but I try to keep up to date as much as I can. When do I make sure I'm aware of the gist of what's going on in my city? This? This never reached the police's ears. Or the health and safety executive. Do you know about this guy? One glance here says everything. They've hidden it from the media. They've kept it from the police. It's surprising this will also be a secret from someone of Isabel's position in the company. Fuck. He... Rose was looking for him. Last week. We haven't heard anything from him either. Until... Until now. They never mentioned this to us. Business going under and someone dies while working here? Of course they want to keep that quiet. It's bad publicity. This whole thing is just getting freakier by the minute. Nevertheless, I can have files for Isabella to make a copy of. The pages with their names, addresses and contact numbers will do. We'll start with the ones who live within the city. Sometimes there are things you really can just brush, brush off as a mere coincidence. In my line of work, once a pattern pops up, it's only right to be suspicious. Especially the thing with Sai. It hits too close to stuff my own friends have been telling me. All of this? It's considerably thinner than the one she brought in, yet somehow the way she hugs the folders close to herself makes it seem, seem heavier. Like she's hanging onto it in the same manner one will latch onto a lifeline. Only the noteworthy ones. And those that might still be alive. Might. She doesn't need to know that. We can't check the outside contractors, but the guys with the direct connection to BRC and the people who attended the open house should be enough. We don't have time to see how everyone's doing, especially if... if what you said is true. For a second, she appears about to argue, then quickly signs against it and hides it away before anyone reads the question in her face. Then, in a too abrupt motion, she turns towards the copier and gets to work. Soon, only the machine's constant throne fills the air around us, while I keep myself busy cleaning out the mess we've made. Lack of talk is awkward, to put it mildly, disturbing at worst. I've gotten so used to letting her just bubble away whenever it's just the two of us. I could tell, however... She wants to do more. She wants to fix the mess herself, and that desire makes her antsy. But at the same time, she's learning how not to be impulsive or stubborn, exactly as I told her yesterday before arguing to any of this. Or maybe these so-called changes have always been with her. Their situations have always pushed people to change, after all. Of all seeing this happen in front of me only makes it difficult to find the proper things to say. In an atmosphere this dance and charge, what is left for us to talk about? Certainly, not the news. What's worse is when you only realize all of this inside right after you for redrawn your mouth. You, mouth of. You know, for a house your company seems to be in a hurry to sell, they still made quite a fortune out of it. Look at this. One, two, three, hmm. six. Are you sure they're planning to give your entire share for this? This isn't a small amount, especially given the usual cut, and their accounting department isn't in the greatest shape either. Even if they don't, even if they don't, it's not like someone still needs it. And there's the reason why people don't let me talk. Silence once again descends throughout the room. The dancer compared to the ones we've shared tonight. Behind me, I can still hear her movements, sharp and precise, while she feeds the originals to the machine. Then, with one last click, all of it stops. Her feet shuffle slightly against the floor when she moves away. Something creaks softly, probably a table, as she settles her wave against its side. By this time, an apology is already at the tip of my tongue, but. Bell, I'm. Papa's. Papa's gone, Ash. Within those scant few seconds, everything between us shifts as the gravity of her world sinks in. Right then and there, something harsh and immovable rises between us. Death is something I'm familiar with. Almost 10 years in the police force, and it's impossible not to be acquainted with it. But this, okay, this is different from those dead bodies we examine in forensics. 
A far cry from the victims we found on the bad investigation. Those I could easily distance myself from. No emotional attachments, no need for pretenses. Yet somehow, somehow I still find myself grasping for things to tell her. And words of comfort that will do the pain. Because even without looking at her, her grief feels palpable enough, her pain an immutable wave hanging over us. Just stay busy, tell me about him. Alright, what do you want her to tell you? That's the thing. Alright, stay busy. Come on. Okay, not reacting to, to, to her words might be a bad idea. And tell me about him. This might be like referring to the situations, the good memories she had with her father, right? And that would like allow her to maybe relax a bit, something like that. I'm not good with situations like that. I mean, if you were, if I were in Isabella's situation, someone wanted to talk uh, about someone that died on my side, I would probably brush them, brush them off. But all right, let's give it a shot. I saved. I saved. When? Plus. Huh? When what? Your... your dad. I mean, when did you find out? She doesn't answer. Not immediately, anyway. Work moment, the heart simply stretches out before us. Spanning across the seconds, we let pass while we both simply stand there waiting. Eventually she exhales. Lightly muted enough that I might have missed it. Had I not been paying attention to her every movement? Yesterday, around three in the afternoon there, Mama called. She, she told me he passed away in his sleep, and I guess, I guess I can take comfort in that, huh? But Papa wasn't in any pain when... She tears off, releases another rug breath hidden underneath her chuckles, each one smurfless, heavy with nothing but sorrow. Then she falters in silence, and for all my attempts at lightening her burden, I'm suddenly at a loss. Reassurances could only do so much, when her only reason for staying here has suddenly been taken from her. A hope yanked from under her feet right after it was generously given. And without that, without the one person who pushes her to endure this all of the shit we're going through, she's going through, means nothing but struggle. What does one say to a person? Break at the edges, slowly wearing thin and breaking. Are words even enough? What right do I have anyway? I cannot give her anything apart from lies that changed me as a person and affections she may or may not even want for herself. Because no matter how easy she has warmed herself into our lives, how immutable her presence has become, her own heart will always yearn for something else. Or hope. Tell me about him. Huh? About what? Your dad. Tell me about him. Anything. Just... just talk. Say anything you want. Doesn't matter what it is. I'll listen. Sounds again. As if she's testing the way of my question. For what purpose it is. For a reason even I can say right now. After a while, before she starts, I look down to her voice hitching faltering and stumbling on each syllable as she chooses her words. A rough start, but soon it steadies. And along with it, to keep company the stories from childhood and memories she's fond of, are the tears. Despite this, in spite of the grief choking her words off, the heart closing her throat and the sobs racking her life form, she continues. Like the mere act of speaking is a relief in itself. Here it is. She tells me of her father, the person who named her. 
how she looked up to him, how she was a bit of a tomboy growing up, in her attempts to imitate him. And how the men encouraged her to pursue what she really wanted. Perhaps even the only thing she ever did for herself, having grown up not wanting and being more than food to put on their tables. He told me I don't have to listen to them. That I can do what I want. Every day he'd wake up at four, Ash. Because he'd earn more that way. And every time, every single time, he'd give them to me. Whatever extra he earned, he'd hand them all. So I'd have something to use for my paintings. And you know what? Back home, just a good tube of paint costs almost as much as what we spend for food the whole day. But he'd always set something aside. He told me he wanted to see my paintings in a museum one day. She pours all of it out. Every little thing she loved and admired about him. Like this, it's easy to see why she has gone to such great lengths for him. Why she abandoned her dreams. Why she went against his wishes. Just to grant him another chance at life. Others will say it's her warmth that draws people to her. Or her cheer. They're wrong, but here is the whole truth to her either. Because those who have never bothered to look beyond the surface will never see it. See her. See someone earnest. Someone who has always meant well despite her underlying stubbornness. This is how she loves. Warm. Steadfast. Unflinching. You never meet many people like her. Not in my line of work. Not with the kind of people I've had to deal with. Always with something to hide. Always with something to lie about. Eventually when you run across too many of them, you change. You become like them. In many ways. For a lot of reasons, she's she's the kind of person I want to be and be around with. Who made me feel I'm still worth something? He didn't want me to leave. Said, begged. I could finish my studies first. In the end, I couldn't even. I couldn't even grant him that one request. I'm a terrible daughter, aren't I? You're not. Huh? Uh. You're not. I can't speak for your dad. I haven't even met the man. But I know you're not. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going with this. Well, the remark just came, came out. Now I'm stringing all of those together as I go. But one thing is certain, none of what I'm about to say is a lie. The Isabella I know is a total klutz, but I've never seen anyone work as hard as she does. She's the type who wears her heart on her sleeve, though it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's always in the right place. She's intimidated by a lot of stuff, but she knows how to appreciate the smallest things in life. Frankly, you've caused us no small amount of trouble since you barge into our lives. But when I'm with you, when I'm with you, all of my worries seem trivial. He has already crept up my face when the turn this whole thing is about to take registers. For a blur the rest of, out of, it, uh, of it out, the clear feelings I'm not even retrieving to anyone. Marta says her, my hand comes up to small for the rest of it. For embarrassment quickly takes the reins, before I can completely clamp my mouth shut. And I'm pretty sure Zack and Becca think the same way. You have a nasty way of growing on people like that, and... and... You know what? We got everything we needed in here. I'll just wipe the security recordings and we're good to go. While I'm at it, you... You better wipe the snot off your face. And you don't look very nice when you're bawling like that. Hastily I gather everything. The personal files, files client documents, sale agreements, contracts, anything my hand could reach. In the record time, all of it has been stuck in a neat pile, ready for storage. I'm heading for the records room, not a few seconds later. Wherever that is. It should be an easy find, unless this place is a mage of some sort, which I hide. Sorry, I highly doubt. Still beats staying here and seeing the look on her face. Crap.
Really, her anger is still verbal. I can't take that. Including the glower she sent my way. So, uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll go get the security videos and put these back where you pulled them from. Man, these, these are heavy, you know? Ash, it's just paper. You don't even know where I... Oh, pff, no, I can, I can handle this. Easy as pie. And, uh, yeah, security cams, tapes, videos, cams. Yeah, I'm off. How does your son at this point? Maybe. Maybe not yet. Alright, so he's going on his own. Uh, let's end the episode here. And we'll continue this tomorrow. I wonder what would happen when they will get out of the building. Huh. Anywho, for now, hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you tomorrow as well. Bye bye.